Mark's Classic Rock, Q1043. Today is UN International Holocaust Remembrance Day, and I am sitting next to someone who you may not know has extreme emotional ties to the Holocaust because both of his parents survived the Holocaust, and the world would not have Getty Lee of Rush had his parents not survived three concentration camps. Um, so first of all, welcome. Hi. Thank, Thank you, you nice for, to be here. for telling, coming here to tell your parents' story. Sure. Um, so your parents were from Poland. Yeah, my parents were from Poland. My mother was born in Warsaw and moved to a small town uh, about an hour um, south called Stachowice. And uh, my father was uh, from a town, uh, I don't know how the English version of it, but he called it Ostrovce. But he was from another town, and uh, uh, yeah, they were both in the work camps. And that's where they met. They met in the work camps, uh, I think it was 39. How old were they? Uh, 12 and 13. That wow. Age, yeah. And so they would meet, and you know, they were kids, really, you know. Uh, adolescents, and they would chit-chat and flirt on their way to the work camps because uh, originally when uh, when the German army moved in there, they needed to build the camps, right? So they used the uh, young people and the healthy people of the town, the Jewish population, to, to walk to the site and, and build and work uh, until it was... Uh, finished till they did what they had to do. So um, that's where they met. And of course, they would joke around and flirt as kids would, and no matter what the circumstance. Uh, and they sort of had a crush on each other. They ended up at Auschwitz before yeah. they were separated with your mother, Manya, going to Bergen-Belsen and your father taken to Dachau. How old were they then? Do you know when they were separated? Um, well, my mom... Uh, and dad were in Auschwitz, I think, for a couple of years. Uh, and how they survived in there, I don't know. Um, my dad was transferred out of Auschwitz before my mother was. Uh, my mother and her sister and her mother survived together in Auschwitz. And uh, my grandmother used to tell the story because they would line them up every day. And they would go left, right, left, right, right. If you were... Uh, went to one direction, you went to the gas chambers. If you went to the other direction, you went to work. So my grandmother would rearrange them in the lineup so they all went to the same direction because she believed that if they were all going to perish, they would perish together. And if they were all going to survive, they would survive together. But my grandmother was an amazing person. She kept them alive uh, throughout their time in the camps. And uh, and they, when the war was starting to look... Uh, bad for the Germans, and panic ensued, uh, and they were starting to ship uh, surviving prisoners into Germany and out of Poland. That's when the three of them were put in a, a cattle car and shipped to Bergen-Belsen, where they were eventually liberated. There are many Holocaust survivors who just did not want to speak of that horror to their children. Your parents were different they started speaking about this to you when you were how old? Um, my earliest memories were my mother talking about the war and talking about uh, Hitler and talking about what had happened to her family. You know, uh, my dad was not a big talker about that period, and and he passed away when I was about twelve years old. So, uh, but. I remember my mother constantly reinforcing the idea that we had to keep the family together because these terrible things can happen. And she felt, uh, and as many survivors did, that it was their uh, their desire to repopulate and rebuild the clan that had been destroyed by uh, by the war. You're listening to Getty Lee. Yes, that Getty Lee of Rush. Both of his parents are Holocaust survivors, and we honor them on this International Holocaust Remembrance Day. Did did they actually get a, tell you about, I mean, as a child, about the horrors they endured? 
Yeah, they did. <laughs> so what did they... I mean, I, mean I could have turned out to be a rural mental case, but <laughs> I didn't. Um, my mom was is a, a really interesting woman. She's super strong. And so she believed in sharing everything she'd experienced. Now, it gave me nightmares as a child, as I'm sure my brother and sister had the same thing. My, my brother was too young to remember a lot of this, but my sister is two years older than me. So we grew up with, uh, you know, the same, you know, horror that, that she had survived. And we felt, you know, blessed that we still had her in our lives. And, and my grandmother and my aunts and uncles, all who were survivors of, of the Holocaust. And so it's a very large community and they stay very tightly knit. And that was their way of reinforcing uh, the importance to carry on. But uh, some of my uncles and aunts were more closed-mouthed about it, and, and I have friends, that, uh, one friend in particular who uh, is you know, one of my closest friends, Ben Mink, a musician who's worked with Rush and has gone on to be successful producing Katie Lang. His parents were Holocaust survivors, and that was one of the things that bonded us was the stories. In, in some sense, we felt like we grew up in the same household, but um, some parents don't like to relive the past. I'm thankful my mother wasn't afraid to do that because I grew up with a, a better perspective on things. And uh, and she's a combination of optimist and paranoid. Uh, so in 1995 uh, was the 50th anniversary of her liberation. And she called me to her house, and she said, well, I got a call from the society, and they're doing a, a, a reunion. Uh, I said, of the survivors? Yes, it's in uh, Belsen. I said, is this your way of telling me you'd like me to take you? To, well, back I to would go. Belsen? Yeah. She said, well, I would go. I said, okay. So I arranged a trip for my mom and my sister, my brother and myself. And uh, we flew uh, as guests of the German government to uh, this reunion of uh, Holocaust survivors from around the world. They came uh, back to Belsen, and uh, I think it was Helmut Kohl, who was the chancellor at the time, and he spoke. And, and I remember sitting there with my mom in the audience, and she was looking around, obviously. She was very quiet on that trip and deep in thought. And she said she was very proud that she was standing there with her children. She felt for the first time that she'd actually won the war. And I thought that was such a positive statement to come from someone who had experienced so much in her life. And what was that like for you? Oh, we were all in tears, of course. It's interesting to me how Germany has dealt with its history of the Holocaust because I was recently there, mm -hmm. and I was really taken with how they don't try to erase history. No. They... They embrace their history, but say how they have moved on yeah. since. Well, but the history to, you know. is there. And right the street, right by where Hitler used to have his rallies, the street was named for Yitzhak Rabin. Right. So on the bus, I'm seeing this, and I thought, yeah. This is the way to do it. What I didn't ask you yet was, how did your parents get reunited? Tell us that story. Uh, well, that's a, that's a good story, too. Uh, <clears throat> they got separated. Obviously, my dad was transferred out uh, to other camps. And, and uh, he ended up, after liberation, in Munich. And uh, after the war, uh, the people that had survived in Bergen-Belsen were moved into the officers' quarters, the barracks. And... Uh, because they torched the, uh, the actual place where they were incarcerated. Uh, they said the excuse was uh, because of disease and typhus, but I think it was partially political. They didn't want it standing, but anyway, that's another story. Uh, anyway, she was living in the barracks, and they, it was a displaced persons camp now, and they would post everyday survivors, so people were trying desperately to find out which of their family members were still alive. And, and my dad had discovered my mom's brother, bumped into my mom's brother in a hospital in Munich, and he had also survived the war. And so when they saw each other, you know, he, he, my dad said, well, I, you know, I'll wait and we'll both go to Belsen because I think they're there. He, he had this 
uh, feeling that they were there. At least one of them had survived there. So, uh, But my dad got impatient to wait, and he left. I guess by that time they were just hitchhiking around Europe trying to, to find each other. So, And my mom didn't know that he had survived, and uh, she said she was in the— uh, she was hanging something out of the window, I think clothes to be dried or something like that. And she saw him walk in to view and she fainted and she almost fell out the window, of course. Uh, so they were reunited and they eventually got married in Belson <clears throat> at the displaced persons camp. Yeah. Uh. <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> You've been doing a lot of talking today. Um and and why did they decide to settle in Canada? Do you know? I mean, were there other uh, relatives? That yeah, came my to father's Canada? sister had left uh, Poland before the war, and had missed the the uh, the Holocaust, and she was there. Uh, so my father wanted to be reunited with his sister, so they decided on Canada. And excuse me, so they came with. My mother came, her mother and her sister all and her brother all moved to, to Canada along with my dad. I can't believe everyone survived. I mean, that's just an amazing yeah. story in and of itself. Well, my dad lost both his parents and I think six brothers and sisters in the war. Um, I know I know there are at least two Rush songs um, that were inspired by your parents' um, experiences. Red Sector A... 1984, mm-hmm. and also from your solo album, Grace to Grace. Yes. My question to you is, how, how did your parents' experiences and you learning about that, how did that impact you, who you became? Well, it's a, it's a hard question to answer. Uh, you know... Uh, Obviously, I think children of the Holocaust have uh, um, a cross to bear in a way. And people have written books. uh, Smarter people than me have written books about it. Uh, It's hard to say. My experience is I was raised in a house uh, largely by my mom. And my mom is a fighter and a survivor. And so she taught us the importance of uh, working for what you want in life and the importance of family. Uh, of course, as a teenager, I rebelled to all things familial. And uh, when I started playing music, she thought I'd run off to join the circus, pretty much. Uh, but we, you know, we that didn't last long, you know. Uh, and uh, so I don't feel like I was scarred by her experiences. I feel like I was made wiser by her experiences and help me view the world in a different way and and to fight intolerance and to fight for humanity and to, it made me um, a liberal thinker and I remain a liberal thinker uh, and especially in this day that we're living in this day and age where uh, the word liberal is is quickly becoming a dirty word I think it's important to fight for those things uh, I wanted to also, ask you what you say or what you think of people who are the Holocaust deniers? Well, they're the worst people in the world. I mean, to deny that that happened, I, it's just, it's a shame. Uh, it's a shame on humanity, you know, just like racism is a shame on humanity and, and anti-Semitism is a shame on humanity. I mean, it, we live in an incredible uh a universe where we are able to learn from other cultures and embrace other cultures. and Any kind of thinking that denies that right is, is wrong thinking to me, and these are, are, are people that should be shamed. That's all I can say about it. They should be shamed. They should be ashamed of themselves. I know you were bar mitzvahed. That's a mm-hmm. coming of age, really big deal in, in Jewish families, um, and it's very serious. Uh, how do you describe yourself now as a Jew? Well, I'm, I'm a cultural Jew. I'm not a religious person. Uh, I'm not uh, a believer in God. Uh, uh, you know, witnessing what my family went through uh, to me was proof that there was no God. So 
Uh, I've, I don't practice the faith, but I love being a Jew, and I love my family traditions, and I love our uh, sort of racial characteristics that we share, our sense of humor, our love of fatty foods. <laughs> There's some good. Uh, food. Yeah. So uh, that's what that's what what that's how I look at myself. I'm a cultural Jew. And does your mom believe in God? Oh yeah. My mom is very religious, always has been very religious. Interesting. A lot of my family is, most of my family is, but I take a different view. I really thank you, Getty Lee, uh, one thank of the you. founders of Rush. I, this was an extraordinary conversation, an important one to have, and thank you for sharing, and thank your mom, too, please. My pleasure. Thanks for having me here. You're welcome.